Hey there, I'm Dave, also known as the Notion Coach, and what we're going to do today is a quick walkthrough of the goal tracker. This is a free Notion template. The link is in the description below, so you're probably either finding this video from the template, or if you haven't downloaded it or are curious about it, you can download it for free using that link. And the big goal with this template is to start to explore relational databases, in this case specifically a goals database and a metrics database and kind of connecting the two together to get more out of goal tracking and tracking with more specificity and seeing where we're at in our progress. This is really meant for users that are new to Notion or have been using it, but primarily for setting up pages and organizing files, but haven't quite explored relational databases. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you know I'm a fanatic over to databases, especially when we think about all the opportunities that come up from connecting databases together. You get to roll up information from different databases. You get to filter and sort with a lot more granularity. So there's just so many possibilities when we think about leveling up using Notion. So this walkthrough is really just going to get through what's going on in the template, how to use it, how to create a goal, how to connect metrics to that goal, and how to make it your own. <clears throat> so we've got, if we start at the homepage, we've got a menu up at the top. These are just links directly to these databases. So goals will go straight into your list of goals in a gallery view. Metrics will go to all the metrics that you're tracking and support is a space for commonly asked questions that have come in and how to set up the template, how to customize it, things like that. The first, if we're on the homepage, we've got these two views and this is meant to be a, an overview, a snapshot of where we're at with both our goals and our metrics. And these two databases are tied together and we'll talk about what that looks like. And then at the very bottom, this is the back end. So a lot of Power Notion users like to create a space that's either called backend or systems or databases, which is basically a space to organize all of your high level databases, just to make sure that we have an awareness of where those live and avoid the possibility of a database getting deleted or moved accidentally. So if you're creating a more holistic workspace, definitely recommend doing that. So next, let's go into setting up a new goal first. So if we go into the top right, there's a goal template. So we're going to use this as a starting point and for a few reasons that we'll get into. So let's create a goal, call it publish a weekly newsletter in Q3. We've got some properties that are associated with this goal. So let's just kind of dive into these area. This is just a select tool of defining what area this goal is a part of. Again, this will be helpful if you're trying to filter or see what are my what are all of my fitness goals or health goals so in this case we'll assign writing timeline because we're dealing with q3 we'll say start date of july 1st and end date of september 30th goal metrics we haven't set up any yet but we're going to do that next goal metric percentage this is a roll up so if we dive into this we can see here that this is rolling up not only the goal metric but the progress on that. So we are going to be tracking our progress. So you'll be able to kind of pull in that data directly in this view. And we'll also see what that looks like. And then gallery image, if you are if you want to have that cover image, if you'd like the gallery view, this could be helpful for, for setting that up. Okay, so if you'll notice, there's a, a table in here part as part of the template called metrics. So this is a look at the metrics template. And if we filter, we'll see that this is automatically filtered to this particular goal. So one of the big benefits there is that we're connecting the two automatically. We don't have to manually make that connection. It's kind of done already. So what we're gonna do next is come up with two metrics that are tied to this goal. And this is helpful for getting into detail about not only what the goal is and what the timeline is, but what are the key numbers that you want to hit that will give you that feedback that you've met that goal. So. First one we'll say is publish 12 newsletters. And then another one we'll say double subscribers. And then 
and here we've got two number properties. So we're starting at zero and the goal is 12. And then for double subscribers, let's say if we're at currently at 2000, then we want to get 2000 subscribers in quarter three. All right, so now if you notice, if we go back up here to the properties, these goal metrics are now showing up as part of this goal, as well as the goal metrics. So if you're making your way through the quarter and you're midway through and you've published six newsletters, you can kind of see that instant feedback in addition to tracking, maybe you're, you're looking at subscribers every other week and you're making your way through that, you can see progress there as well. So that's just setting up a goal. Let's dive a little bit more into metrics to see what that page looks like. You'll also notice that that showed up here in our goals. And if we scroll down to the metric space, we'll also see that we've got these new metrics. So double subscribers and published 12 newsletters. There's another view here called by goal. And what this does is organize metrics by goal. So we can kind of see and scan what, where we at with our metrics by a specific goal. So if it's about writing consistently, build a portfolio and so on. If we scroll down to the bottom, I believe, publish a newsletter, we can see these two automatically populated here. One more note is if we pop into one of these metrics, there's also a template for metrics. And this just really kind of gives an icon. And then once we, once we hit that goal, if we click complete, that'll just kind of give a way to filter to only active goals. One other cool thing to note is if we get to a point, let's go back to our goal. If we get to a point where we do hit our goal here, you'll notice that the progress, which is a formula, and this is really just, we're taking a look at the current number, the target number, and the progress toward that final target number. But if we hit that number, this automatically turns into complete. So again, another visual reference of seeing where we're at with our goal metrics and by association, our goals. So a couple of th things to keep in mind here in both of these views is we want to define what are the default views that make the most sense for your workflow. So in this case, we could organize by quarter, by date, by area, if you like to kind of categorize goals by area. So there's a lot of different ways to organize these, especially on this homepage to really make it feel more natural. And same thing goes for metrics here, you know, I kind of default to the gallery view just as a quick snapshot, but a couple of things to keep in mind here, this is really about exploring systems that leverage relational databases, but we could imagine connecting projects to these goal databases. We could also connect tasks, connect documents, things like that. So there's a lot of different directions that we could go. If you've used or come across the manifest template, you know that there's several databases that are all connected and that just allows for filtering and being able to see, you know, what are my tasks for today as an example. So that's just a quick overview of the goal tracker. Let me know if you have any questions or ideas or comments, drop them below. And if you haven't checked it out, you can download it for free using the link. And in the meantime, I'll be releasing a few more of these lean notion 101 templates. So take a look for that if you want to subscribe to the channel as well. That'd be great. Otherwise, see you in the next video.